Hey guys, this is Chris again from Half Chrome. Today we got a full review of this guy. We've had a few days to uh, play with it. It is now finally available on DJI.com. We're going to cover how to and how not to do a throw and go as they call it or a palm launch. We're going to also cover uh, a bunch of other things including how to shave about 25 minutes off the charge time. We got a full review. Stay with us. Be back in a second. All right, welcome back. First up, let's talk about what comes in the box. You got the drone. You got its uh, larger than average for drone this size battery. We'll talk more about that later. You got the four prop guards that do come installed. If you're new to uh, flying drones, we recommend you keep those on. They're pretty hard to get off actually, but uh, I was able to weasel them off of there. You do get an extra set of props and a uh, prop puller that's in there. It helps you pry off the props and a set of minimalist instructions. Now, a couple things you don't get. You don't actually get a way to charge the Tello, so you're gonna have to have your own micro USB and your own uh, brick. They recommend it's at least 1.5 amps, which is bigger than your small little like iPhone chargers. Um, your iPad charger, for example, if you have one of those, is 2.1 amps. That's what we use, uh, and I'll show you what you get with that. It also doesn't come with a memory card, and there's a reason for that. It doesn't actually take an onboard memory card. It streams all the video to your smartphone directly. There's good things about that and also some bad things, and we'll get more into that later as well. All right, now that we've covered what comes in the box, let's talk about what I think the best feature of this guy is it's its amazing sensors it has in the bottom of it and its ability to stay in one spot for really an incredibly long uh, period of time. As you see in this video I'm showing here, the Tello just stays right in front of the camera, uh, barely moves at all over several minutes, really impressive stuff. Now, if you take it off on a really uniform uh, ground surface like I have here in this room, a carpet, uh, it may struggle, it may drift around quite a bit. I had to grab uh, whatever I had around me, throw it on the carpet. It really only needs a couple things. I threw a few more on there for humor. Um, you just need a couple things on the ground just so it has some visual reference for its downward facing, what they call an optical flow camera, which keeps things nice and stable. So uh, incredibly stable if it has something to fly over. If you ever see it wandering away from you, uh, just make sure you navigate it towards some ground that has some contrast below it. But really the most stable drone we've ever flown. Uh, it's one thing to have the optical flow stability. It's quite another to hold position altitude so tightly. Uh, drones for the last one to two years uh, have been very common. Even cheap toy drones coming with an altitude sensor uh, to do uh, altitude hold, they call it. Uh, this thing, however, it's doing it incredible. I mean, we're talking about a few inches uh, the Tello moves around. So really impressive there. All right, so let's get into the what they call the flight modes or the features of the Tello. So first up is what they call throw and go. So you start this feature and then it gives you five seconds to toss it in the air. During those five seconds, the props are spinning slowly. Now what you don't want to do is listen to the on-screen instructions. Uh, this is probably the biggest problem with the app the Tello app is it tells you to wait five seconds then throw the drone. I mean, you read the text for yourself. I think it's pretty clear what they're telling you to do. Uh, that is a recipe for just throwing your Tello on the ground. Probably not what you want to do. Um, we did it once and then we wised up as to really what they were saying, trying to say, which is in the next five seconds, you have five seconds to toss your uh, Tello up in the air, in which case it works quite well. So. Uh, heed our advice, uh, rise, please fix the instructions. It's kind of ridiculous you got that one wrong. Um, but that's that one. It's fine feature, nothing too special. I'm not sure how often uh, people will be using that. It's kind of like a novelty thing, but it's kind of fun. So the most impressive mode is the circle mode. Uh, really, it works almost as well as a GPS drone. Really impressive. It takes, stays about six feet, uh, which is roughly two meters away uh, by my estimation, and slowly goes around you. I'm not sure exactly how long it took uh, to circle around, maybe about 30 seconds or so. Uh, how they accomplish that? Is it with the downward sensors, inertial sensors, all the above? 
don't know, never seen it before, uh, don't expect to see it soon from any other uh, quad like this that's not GPS. Uh, really amazing they could pull it off and probably the best feature in terms of uniqueness and usefulness that they have on this guy. Another useful mode is what they call up and out, which is kind of like a droney. Uh, maybe saw this on, on several other drones the last couple years, including the DJI Spark. Uh, basically, you just position it here and it slowly flies away. I also see people using that feature as well. They also have the bounce, which the drone just goes up and down a few feet about a meter or so, not really sure uh, what you're gonna be using for. I think they just kind of throw in a couple features to show you the capabilities of uh, what you can program the Tello to do if you're so inclined using um, the Scratch software package from MIT. Now we haven't tried doing any of that yet, but uh, the bounce mode anyway, kind of more of a, again, a novelty thing. Another one you might find useful is the spin. So wherever it is, it just slowly spins around. Now uh, you can do that obviously with the controls, but it may be hard to get a nice smooth control speed with that. Uh, that's in the yaw direction, uh, which is spinning like this. And um, you know, I could see people using that as well. Uh, gets the job done. So next up is flips. So the way they did this on the Tello is they included uh, a little touch screen in the middle of your smartphone. They pull the, uh, the typical controls out to the sides and put a touch pad in the middle that lets you swipe. Now it is quite common on toy drones to be able to flip forward, uh, left, right, and backwards. Uh, the Tello includes four additional directions, which is going diagonally, uh, forward, left, forward, right, backwards, left, backwards, right. Um, cool, it's a cool novelty thing to be able to flip your drone around. Uh, it doesn't really capture useful video, but it can be kind of fun. And we really like the implementation of being able to swipe. It's probably the best way to do it that we've seen to implement on a touch screen of a smartphone. So Tello doesn't call this last one a mode, but you'll see when you go to land the Tello, there's two ways of landing it. Uh, one is just a typical landing, which it'll just keep going down. Uh, until it hits the ground and it does in that nice controlled way and knows where the ground is due to the sensors. The second is a palm landing, uh, which it'll hover there for I think about five seconds. You put your hand underneath and it lands. Uh, works every time. I didn't drop, uh, drop the Tello once. So that's kind of a neat thing too if you want to do it. I see you using that more often than the uh, throw and go way of launching the Tello. So let's talk about flight time. Another one of the standout features of the Tello. It's thanks to two things, I believe. One is this really large battery. Now it's small, but it's large with respect to the drone. It's 3.8 volts, which means it's some of the newer uh, lithium polymer technology, higher energy, energy density than we've seen in some of the old, older LiPos. So it really helps keep the drone airborne for a long time. Second up is these props. These are not the shape of your standard toy drone props. Uh, looks like a little more engineering went into these helping to extend uh, the flight time of the drone. Now they claim 13 minutes. We measured, as you can see here, uh, just over 13 minutes, got over to 13 and 25 seconds. So not disappointing on flight time at all. So we did flight time, time to do charging time. In the instruction manual, it says 1.5 amp charger minimum, five volts. Well, I put on a 5.1 volt iPad charger, which, which does up to 2.1 amps. And with that, we got a charging time of just over an hour, an hour and seven minutes. So a lot better than what uh, they say it, it can charge in. Can we maybe expect a little bit uh, less life in this battery, fewer charge cycles because of that? Maybe 5.1 volts isn't really such a big deal. I don't expect that I'm gonna have any issues with this really, certainly haven't had any issues yet. Real quick about the durability of this thing. Uh, haven't disappointed in our testing there. We've crashed it a few times uh, thanks to a little bit of reckless flying down here in the basement and the uh, misleading instructions in the throw and go feature. So uh, it's done just great. Not even a bent propeller, which is a very common thing to have. So haven't need to re needed to replace those at all. Not even really a scratch on this guy. It's nice and durable. Let's dive into the details about the Telos camera. This little five megapixel camera uh, does do a great job. The big thing that this thing can do that no other drone really does in this price range is dim digital 
image stabilization and it does a pretty good job with it. And in order to do that it crops down the image and basically adjusts it to go opposite of whatever uh, direction the tello is leaning. So left, right, forward, back. Um, it only does that in what they call a slow flying mode of the drone. When you switch over to fast flying mode as you can see here the field of view does expand quite a bit. You also get the full field of view when you take pictures. So sometimes your pictures can be pitched over a little bit of course, you can always crop that out later. Um, but basically, two different fields of view, depending if you're in slow mode or the uh, wider mode, fast mode, which is intended to be nice and wide field of view to help you do what's called FPV or first person view flying, which you do uh, with your smartphone in a set of goggles or just looking down at your screen like that. So, you do want that field of view if you're looking at the screen, and, uh, but you're going to get the narrow field of view for the fully stabilized video, which does work pretty well. Now, how did we like the video and the camera quality on this? Well, it's pretty darn good. As you can see here, we've got our image target. It does a pretty good job of capturing the details. We find the photos to be true to their five megapixels uh, in their quality, not really any blurriness. It's all due to pixelization, the limitation of five megapixels. The video quality, however, could suffer a little bit particularly as the Tello gets further away. Now that's because, as we mentioned before, there is no onboard memory card on the Tello. Maybe one of its biggest downsides, no ability to get the full resolution, no degradation video quality. So do fly it nice and close if you care about uh, getting a nice looking video out of it. But when it is close and you do have a good connection, there's no interference, you do get a pretty nice recording out of this, certainly our favorite for a drone under $100. Another minor point about the camera on the Tello is its lag. Um, like any Wi-Fi connected drone, you will see a little bit of lag. Uh, DJI um, Rise uh, tried to promote this as a bit of a racing, racing this thing around. Uh, that, uh, that delay is going to give you a little bit of a challenge. So overall, if you're really interested in racing these little things around your house, we recommend a different quad that's a similar size. It's called the Eshin M80. For racing around your house, the M80 has a couple advantages over the Tello. One is a much lower lag video feed and a wider field of view camera. Now you're not gonna use this thing to take video of your kids, but if you wanna race your house, it's really our top pick. Comes paired with a remote, uh, which isn't true of a lot of racing drones. It has acro mode capability, you just need to get yourself a set of goggles to go with them, which you can do for around $50. So based on some of the comments we're seeing on YouTube already, uh, people are kind of wondering, oh, is this like a cheaper, smaller Spark? The answer is no. Uh, you just can't get a lot of what you can get out of here. This has the onboard memory, has a much better camera in terms of its megapixels and its stability. It has the gimbal uh, to really take care of most of that. Um, and much longer range and flight time as well. So if you're expecting uh, no flyaway potential, uh, higher quality uh, videos, you're gonna wanna go with the Spark. Now, you don't have four or 500 bucks to spend on a Spark. There are some other options. Just real quick, we'll talk about one of those. This guy is the Unique Breeze. It has gone on sale. Initially, the same price as the Spark about 18 months ago has plummeted in price, uh, which made it an attractive buy for us. We just got it a few weeks ago, actually for $150. Um, so for under 200 bucks, you can get it on Amazon still for around 180. And it is uh, very similar in terms of how you operate it compared to the Tello, but it has a couple things that Tello doesn't, one of which is GPS. Uh, another is a much uh, higher resolution camera and the ability to tilt that camera down to get different camera angles. Um, does have a better range as well, still nothing compared to the Spark. So basically you're looking at your $100, $200, $400. $400. These are our recommended picks in those price ranges. We will have other videos coming up that do some more detailed comparisons uh, to the peers of the Tello like the Parrot Mambo and these guys here. Okay, before I leave you guys, I gotta tell you some of the things I don't like about this guy. It, does, it is not a perfect little drone. So first up are the motors. They are brushed motors. They are not brushless. You can get drones with small brushless motors these days. You can see this guy actually a little bit smaller um, than the Tello. 
and it does have these brushless motors. Could we see it on a Tello 2? I think so. Uh, there is a potential for that certainly to come out. Uh, DJI has made provisions for that on their website. If you look at their URL, uh, it's not dji.com slash Tello, it's slash Tello series slash Tello. So already leaving room potentially for a follow on to this guy. In terms of things I found when actually setting it up and flying it, syncing it to your phone can be a little bit slow. Uh, took me uh, usually around one minute for the app to realize it was actually paired through the Wi-Fi signal. So that was just kind of annoying, slower than a lot of the drones uh, we've played with before. Next is this isn't going to be a big issue. I actually think it's an advantage, but one time I did crash it and the battery came flying out. Now this isn't going to be like your GoPro Karma where these things are falling out of the sky. Uh, like I said, I think it's actually an advantage to be able to just slide this thing out. It is really well retained in there actually. There are some little bugs in the software. One is you get an error every time you do a flip. It recognizes it's upside down and flashes an error message there. That's kind of silly. Uh, obviously it's going to be upside down a couple, uh, you know, half a second after you hit the flip command. So that's kind of ridiculous that that's there. Also, if you run out of battery and land, you get an error message saying, take off error, contact Rise Tech. Do not do that. Please just charge your battery. Uh, there's nothing wrong with your quad. So they got to fix the software a little bit, maybe a firmware update on the Tello. Uh, minor things, not a big issue. The one issue we did have is it will overheat. Will it overheat in flight? No, it will not. Didn't have any issues with that flying in here. It's around uh, room temperature. Um, but sitting in the same room on a hard surface or on a carpet, after about five minutes, you get an overheat warning and the drone powers off. Uh, is that gonna be an issue flying in the summer? Not sure. Uh, it is a little bit concerning, but I'm sure they did test that. Uh, but just keep that in mind if you're in a really hot climate. Uh, watch out for that. This thing does get warm. I guess that's what happens when you put an Intel processor in a little quad that doesn't have a fan in it. So just to wrap it up, for under 100 bucks, I think this is a really a great buy. The image stabilization, the flight time, and the modes, really excellent. You're not going to find that in any other quad, even maybe under 200 bucks, except for the Breeze I talked about before. So for under $100, it's the Tello. Strongly recommend it. Please support us. Use the links below. Uh, we've got links for the Spark, the Tello, and the Unique Breeze. If you got a few more bucks to spend, check that out. Check out our other videos. Subscribe to get more like this. We are going to be comparing the Tello to some other drones. We'll see you next time.